Welcome everyone to the Colorado State Senate District 17 Candidate Forum sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Boulder County. My name is Elizabeth Crow and I'm a proud member of the League and I'm pleased to serve as a moderator for tonight's forum. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. In 2020, we're celebrating 100 years of encouraging informed and active participation in government and influencing public policy through education and advocacy on a wide range of issues. To remain nonpartisan, League never supports or opposes political candidates or parties. For this and other forums, we are so pleased to be partnering with Longmont Public Media. According to FCC policy, candidate forums must be broadcast in their entirety, except by media reporting on events. Candidates or their staff are asked not to record this forum. However, it will be made available online for public viewing through election day. The Colorado State Senate consists of 35 senators who are elected to four-year terms. Each senator is limited to serving two consecutive terms. As of the 2010 census, state senators serve an average of 143,691 residents. State Senate District 17 includes the Boulder County communities of Longmont, Erie, Lafayette, and Louisville. The format for tonight's forum will be as follows. Each candidate will have one minute for an opening statement. We will then begin with questions which have been submitted electronically online to the League or by League members. Questions have been reviewed by our League of Women Voters volunteer screeners and will be addressed to all candidates rather than directing a question to one particular candidate. We will try to ask the candidates as many questions as time permits. Each candidate will have up to one minute or 90 seconds to answer the question. And as moderator, I will announce the time allowed to answer the questions. Our timekeeper will keep you on track. Tonight's forum participants include candidates in ballot order, Sonia Jaquez Lewis, Democrat, and Matthew D. Menza, Republican. We have also asked Andrew O'Connor, who's unaffiliated, to participate since he has been determined by the Colorado Secretary of State as an eligible write-in candidate for Senate District 17. Let's start with opening statements. Again, you will have one minute. Uh, you can watch our timekeeper uh, who will let you know at the 15 second mark when to wrap it up. And we'll begin with you, candidate Jaquez Lewis. Good evening. My name is Sonia Jaquez Lewis and I'm your state house rep for House District 12. I'm a pharmacist and educator and it's been the honor of my life to represent you at the Capitol. In the last two years, I've helped pass hundreds of bills with over a 95% bipartisan vote. And I emphasize bipartisan because we need someone who can work with everyone. If you elect me as your senator, I will be the only licensed healthcare professional in the Senate. And there's no better time to have an expert in healthcare than now. So I am very concerned about what COVID-19 has done to families and businesses. And I believe we're on the right track using science to guide our decisions. And I want to continue that effort. I have a proven record on reducing healthcare costs, improving education, supporting teachers and working families, and the biggest challenge, our climate change emergency. My values are your values. You elected me the first LGBTQ and the first Latin Latina. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you. And now we'll go to you, candidate Menza. Thank you, I'm excited to be here tonight. I'm Matthew Menz, I'm running for State Senate District 17. I was born in Boulder, Colorado. I'm a CU Buffs Mechanical Engineering grad and I left Colorado to serve as a Naval officer for 20 years. I was a fighter pilot and a test pilot. And when I retired, I flew as a test pilot briefly in Seattle, but my wife and uh, children decided to come back here to Colorado and uh, start our family here, raise our kids here. When I returned, I noticed Colorado is not the state I grew up in. The majority in the capital appeared more interested in national politics and then in their local community needs. So we need leadership that focuses on all of us in the community. We need uh, 
leadership that understands that the concept of empowerment is about us, the people, the constituents, not the government. They work for us, not the other way around. And as a formal naval officer, I understand that service is about the people, not the party. So we need political diversity in Boulder County and we need our community to be empowered and we need to focus on local issues. And uh, that's what I'm focused in on. So thank you very much for having me here tonight. Thank you. Candidate O'Connor. Uh, hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, hi. Um, yes, my, I'm Andrew O'Connor and I'm running as an unaffiliated candidate, uh, which means a writing candidate. Um, I believe that the people of Senate District 17 come first, which I think is in clear contrast to um, the Boulder County Democratic Party, who is only interested in um, lining their own pockets and um, enriching special interests like oil and gas. Um, I don't believe in identity politics. I believe that we should elect the best person for the job, regardless of their gender or their sexual um, orientation. Um, I believe that we need to send someone that is not a Democrat or a Republican to the state house because nothing will change. The question is, why isn't the legislature working better? Um, I believe that the Boulder County Democratic Party has sold the people out of District 17 and out to oil and gas. We have the worst air quality every day we get alerts here, and that's because of fracking and the fires, um, which are caused by, uh, and which is all caused by fracking causing um, climate destruction. So um, I ask the people to vote for me, and if they don't want to write me in, I'd ask them to support my Republican candidate. Thank you for your opening statements. And now we'll jump into the questions. Again, please keep an eye on our timekeeper who will give you that signal at 15 seconds and stop. And if you are mid-sentence when your time is up, please feel free to finish that sentence so we can move on to the next candidate. For the first question, we'll start with candidate Menza and let's make this um, um, a 90 second question. So a minute and a half. The question is this. COVID-19 has deeply affected Boulder County communities. Are you satisfied with the state's COVID response to date? What do you feel will be the top priorities of state government next year to ensure successful recovery? And again, candidate Menza, we'll start with you. Yeah, thank you for the question. So I'll start out by saying, initially what we did here in the state was absolutely in line with the national directives we needed to try to get a hold of this uh, situation, understand what was happening. There's a lot of unknowns. So the ma mandates and lockdowns were necessary in order to prevent the uh, healthcare workers and the hospitals from being overrun. But here we are in October and our kids aren't going back to school. We have a lot of secondary and tertiary effects of COVID-19. A lot of our, our businesses are losing uh, their, their livelihood. They're shutting down. We're having a lot of bankruptcies. I've talked to a lot of small business owners that aren't gonna make it through the winter. And we have to ask ourselves, what is the balance between public safety and, 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 and the autonomy or the ability for our businesses and our people to get back to the business? We know how to live with this disease now. We know how to mitigate its risks and uh, the science is out there. So right now there's a lot of parents that are very upset that their kids aren't in school. There's a lot of businesses that are failing. And if you wanna get people back to work, you wanna get people healthier mentally, physically, we need to start learning how to live with this with a little less panic and fear. You know, we have 220 executive orders. We're still under emergency orders. When do we get some autonomy and democracy back to Colorado? So I think it's time to start changing our focus a bit and focusing on what the science is telling us. Thank you. Candidate O'Connor, you're next and you also have 90 seconds to answer. We need you off mute. Could you come off mute, Candidate O'Connor? There you can go. You hear don't mind starting over. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, I believe that we must put public safety first. Um, the government's failed us in the coronavirus response. Um, my wife is uh, is an educator with Boulder Valley School Districts, and she was given a choice. She had a medical exemption, and she was told either um, go back to school and to in-person learning or take a furlough that was unpaid. I think that's unacceptable. We have to put the, the health of the teachers and the children first um, before anything. 
uh, public health must be the priority and Colorado must do a better job than, than what they've had. And again, I think um, that the Democratic Party's failed us in this regard. Thanks. Thank you. And candidate Hakez Lewis. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I am happy with the response that we've had from Governor Polis and the legislature. Uh, we, we have over 2,000 Coloradans who have died from COVID-19. I have a personal connection to that. I have a cousin who was one of the first people to die in Boulder County in Lafayette. Uh, it's, and also my wife is a frontline uh, healthcare worker. So I've been watching this as an elected official from the moment that we got notice uh, that we were going to have to close things down. Uh, I think that Colorado has done a very good job because if you look at how our state has responded as compared to other states, I think that we are doing amazing. I have a positivity rate that is below five. Uh, we are using science to direct us. So I think that we need to continue that path and open as we can using the data to guide us. Uh, we, we still are learning some things about this virus. If you have the most protected man on the planet who can get it, we obviously need to be doing more. So I'm hoping we'll have a better national plan and I'm glad to see what Colorado has been doing. Thank you. Elizabeth, uh, I'm getting a little bit of feedback somehow. I don't know if everyone else is. But. I think if, if um, everyone, all the candidates can put on mute and then unmute only when we're speaking, that'll probably help with the sound a little bit. Andrew, make sure you're on mute, brother. Okay. Hey, this is a challenge, okay? Hold on. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Great. For the next question, we will start with, with candidate O'Connor, and we'll do one minute for this question. The question is, please share your position regarding guns and gun control. If elected senator, would you introduce legislation that would have teachers have guns in schools? Again, we'll start with candidate O'Connor, and you have one minute. Um, thank you for the question. This is very difficult for me. I'm um, I'm the parent of a 12-year-old daughter that's in, in Boulder Valley School District. So I'm, of course, I'm really worried about school shootings. Um, but I'm also an attorney and I understand the Second Amendment. So I know that in Boulder we have a um, assault weapons ban. And I don't think that that would be a bad idea. Um, for some this 17 or, or statewide. However, I think we have to balance um, protecting our children and protecting our neighbors um, and uh, you know the Second Amendment. Thanks. And candidate Huck is Lewis. Yes, thank you very much for this question. Uh, I have, um, I am the prime sponsor of a gun violence prevention bill that we were going to try to run this past session until we had to respond to the pandemic. Uh, I have been named a gun sense candidate by many of the gun violence prevention community groups in Senate District 17. Uh, and so I, I do believe that we need to make our community safer. We have lost far too many um, young, young members of our community. In fact, Six, the six teenagers who were murdered in August were all murdered with stolen weapons. And that is why I'm going to be the sponsor of a lost or stolen uh, gun firearm bill that will encourage responsible gun ownership. So, and I have voted already, I'm on the record as voting against uh, teachers having guns in schools. Teachers need to be teaching, not worrying about where firearms are. So absolutely, I, I think this is a very important issue. We've had the most number of gun sales uh, in the past few months during COVID, and that's very, very concerning to me. So I do want to see what we can do to, to make communities safer. 
Thank you. And candidate Mensa, same question. All right, yeah, and the reason why the gun sales are increasing are because our government's failing us to protect us. So people are fearful, they're scared. I was assaulted uh, on a bike path with my wife because we weren't social distancing. A man attacked me. My wife had a gun pulled on her. Our, 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 our entire society is in upheaval. We have massive mental health issues. We have riots. We have all sorts of things happening all over the, the country. We have a lot of divisiveness. And now we have a lot of people that want to take away our Second Amendment rights. The Constitution had that put into our, 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 our fabric and fun foundation of the country for a reason. And now I get it. As a naval officer, I never had a weapon or thought about it, even as a, as a former military officer, until we had all these things happen to us. And now we get it. We understand why people are buying guns. It's a right to protect ourselves because our government is failing us. You want to defund the police. You want to take away our guns. And you want to have people come to our neighborhood and call us racist and call us names. Yes, we're going to protect ourselves. And everybody should have that right to protect themselves. If a government can't do it, we have to do it for ourselves. So protect yourselves, people. Thank you. And now we'll go to the third question. And for this one, we will start with candidate Hakez Lewis. And the question is regarding uh, air, air quality and, um, and air pollution. Despite Senate Bill 181, which was meant to prioritize protection of public health and the environment from oil and gas pollution, the State Air Pollution Control Division continues to issue hundreds of permits for oil and gas wells, and our ozone levels are higher. Does the state legislature need to take further action? And if so, what should it do? And we'll do one minute for this response. And again, we'll start with candidate Hakez Lewis. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I am an oil and gas impacted Coloradan. Uh, I live within the zone of the CDP, the Crestone Development Plan, and they were scheduled to put 36 production uh, oil pipelines right beside uh, my house on a massive production pad. So this issue is very personal to me. Uh, I agree. I think the air quality that we are experiencing now is dreadful. Uh, it's actually the COGCC, the Oil and Gas Commission, Colorado Oil and Gas per, uh, Commission that issues the permits. And I believe that they have, are in the process of finalizing rulemaking. So we are seeing less of those uh, permits happening now. Uh, I, I helped write Senate Bill 181, and I will continue to monitor it, monitor it to make sure that it's protecting our community. It's public health and citizen safety that have to come first. So I very much agree with the question. Uh, candidate Menza, same question, please, for one minute. Yeah, right now, I'll tell you, our air quality is terrible because of their, these fires. But I'm looking at the data right now from the, the Colorado, uh, the Colorado uh, air pollution data that they put out. And I'm showing a trend line of improving air quality year after year for the last 20 years. So as a scientist, as an engineer, I'm absolutely concerned about environmental issues. It's a big thing on my campaign about how to evolve our energy sources and, and get into a, a real sustainable path for environmental uh, policy vice demonizing ONG and natural gas. I think there's a better way to transition our, ourselves onto something more sustainable in the future. And that's something we can certainly talk about. But right now, I'm not sure where the, the, the correlation is between the data I'm looking at right now that Colorado puts out and the concerns that, for example, Sonia is talking about. But uh, that's something I'm certainly open to debate and discuss in the future. Thank you. Uh, and next for you, candidate O'Connor, same question for one minute response. Uh, okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, you know, every day we have a poor air quality alert here, every single day. Um, I think I'm the only candidate here that wants a fracking ban. Absolute fracking ban is what's needed here. Um, and then the alternative, I would ask that we have a 95% severance tax on oil and gas development in Senate District 17 to make it economically unfeasible. Senate Bill 181 has been an abject failure, and it's just another example of the Boulder County Democratic Party selling the people of, the Sen of Senate District 17 out to oil and gas. We must ban 
fracking. We have no other choice. I don't know if anybody here has had a chance to see the David Attenborough documentary. Um, and he talks about the climate destruction that, that we're facing. And it's all about, um, it's all about fracking and oil and gas development. I res respectfully disagree with the, my Republican candidate. Um, it is not about, it's not fires that is causing, it's, it's a combination of ozone and fracking that's causing this. And, and the, uh, the fire Connor, charcoal. I'm sorry, you're out of time. If you can okay, wrap thanks. up. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. So the next question, uh, we will start with candidate Menza, and we'll also do a minute for this one. The question is, this summer, the Colo Colorado passed the Enhanced Law Enforcement Integrity Bill designed to increase police integrity and accountability and protect civil rights. Do you feel this law goes too far or not far enough to address the issues as designed? You know, I, I think we're all interested in making sure we have fair and equitable law enforcement and, and that everybody is treated fair and equitably. I'm concerned that we're, we're unnecessarily hand tying some of our police officers. I think with this particular bill, it's hard to, to get a feel for what our law enforcement are saying about it yet. I haven't seen the data, but what's more important is can they do their job and is it helping to bridge the gap with some of the concerns of the public? And, you know, I think it's, it's a step in the right direction, but I think we still need some more data on, on its outcome. Thank you. And candidate O'Connor, um, you're next for this question. Um, yes, thank you for that question. Um, so I want to say that I litigated the largest settlement in Denver police history. Um, my client was beaten uh, almost to death, and we settled that case for just under a million dollars. Um, it was one of the worst police brutality cases I've ever seen in my, in my career. Um, I believe that the, the answer is simple on this one. We just make the officers personally accountable. Um, if, they got, if they lose their job, they lose their car, they lose their house, um, this stuff will stop right away. Um, my good friend David Lane said the same thing. We have to make police personally accountable for murder and for police brutality, and that will end this whole thing. The unions just have too much, way too much power, and there's no way that taxpayers in Senate District 17 need to be paying damages from murder and police brutality. Thanks for that question. Thank you. And candidate Hakez Lewis. Yes, thank you. I am a uh, co-sponsor of Senate Bill 217, our Police Accountability Act. Uh, it is one of the premier uh, laws that has been passed uh, in response to the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others. Uh, it, it is one step to address systemic racism. Uh, I think that it is actually moving us in the right direction. We have to uh, look at making police accountable. And what we did in that bill is put in uh, qualified immunity. So it means that police will be accountable for their actions. Uh, it's very much in step with Senate District 17. Uh, so I have talked with police and with law enforcement in the district. Our district attorney of Boulder County came and testified. Our sheriff, Sheriff Pelly, came and testified. So it is very much uh, what Senate District 17 wants. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with candidate O'Connor and we'll do one minute for this question as well. Colorado has since 2013 successfully executed a mail-in ballot process for elections. Based on this experience, what would you say to a District 17 constituent who is concerned about voting in this manner or at all? Oh, we need you to come off mute. I would tell them not to worry about it. Colorado has one of the best records of um, mail-in voting. Um, that's just a red herring by the, by the right, um, telling people trying to 
do what we call voter suppression. Um, go out and vote. That's what I would tell them. Don't worry about it. Thanks. Candidate Jaquez Lewis, same question, please. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we do have one of the best, Colorado has one of the best uh, elections formats and processes in the country. It's not a Democratic or Republican issue. Uh, Utah has uh, mail ballots and have, has been doing it for years. We have very, very little fraud that is attributed. This is an issue that unfortunately the White House has um, politicized and put out into the the into our society. And if you're worried about uh, what how to protect your vote, you can sign up at the Boulder County Elections Office for that traces your ballot in the process, and you can get updates uh, as to when your a vote has been counted. We also have drop boxes all across the county. And I invite you to go to uh, any of the, the websites that show the location of the drop boxes. You can even come to my website, soniaforcolorado.com, and we'll tell you uh, where you can drop off your ballot. Thanks for the question. Thank you. And candidate Menza, same question, please. Well, I'm going to agree with uh, Sonia that we do have a pretty good system here in Colorado, but uh, history will tell you that we have had a lot of issues. We actually had to stop it for, for a period of time in order to fix some of our problems. So it wasn't without problems, but I agree with her that we do have a pretty good system right now that, that's working. I don't think it's perfect. There are some issues, but uh, I think for the most part, we're a pretty good example for the country. But it's not a red herring and it's not an issue by the president. Um, that's, again, more national theatrics, but you have to remember that um, election integrity should be something that all of us are concerned about all the time, no matter what po political spectrum you're on. We should all care about in election integrity. And when we're talking about it from a national perspective, we're talking about going up to 80 million more people that typically did not vote that way. So that should be a concern for us all. But I think here in Colorado, I think we're, uh, we've been doing this for a while. And I think Sonia's right. We should be pretty, uh, pretty okay this election. So, so like Andrew said, get out there and vote and uh, listen to a little uh, Led Zeppelin there because uh, I like your t-shirt. See if he's paying attention. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, for the next question, we'll start with candidate Hakez Lewis, and it is regarding um, leadership, leadership style and opportunities for people in our community. The question is, what have you done or what might you do if elected as senator to encourage and make space for people of color as leaders in our communities including in government positions. And let's do um, one minute for this question as well. Yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, as an educator, I'm always trying to work with folks that are wanting to start out learning about how do we make policy. Um, I'm an adjunct professor at the School of Pharmacy and I had several uh, students intern with me in the past two years. And it's been fascinating to see how how involved how excited they get and how they how much they like being a part of the process. You know, Colorado is really a citizen legislature, so you have people coming in from all different backgrounds. And if we don't encourage the next generations to to be involved, then uh, you know where are we going to end up? So I'm very I'm very pleased uh, in in the process and how we've been able to get people involved in uh, policymaking and lawmaking. And I'm also very pleased that we work in a very bipartisan way. And I hope that as your Senator, I can continue that. So thank you. Candidate Menza, um, your next same question, please. No, I, th I think it's a, it's a great question. We, we need to look at uh, diversity is important. I, I tell people this all the time. When we have a diverse community, when our African-American community is doing well, we all do well. When our Latino communities are doing well, we all do well. We need to make sure that we're, we're unified in, in a manner where we're making sure we have all the resources and opportunities available to everybody in our community. These outreach programs, I agree again with Sonia that, that we're doing a great job making sure that we're bringing all of our constituents and citizens and neighbors along and uh, we need to continue to work hard to make sure that we're looking at areas that, that we might be, uh, you know, have a gap in where we can, we can help members of our community have the same opportunities and uh, make sure we, we, we uh, 
outreach and, and ensure that we have that diverse diversity represented in all the opportunities that we have in our state. And uh, I think that's a really important thing. So when everybody does well, we all do well. And we all need to be a, a group together and, and, uh, and diversity is important. So I think we're, we're leading a good, good charge there here in Colorado. Thank you. Candidate O'Connor, same question, please. Could you repeat the question? Because I'm not understanding it. Sure. It's what have you done or what might you do if elected as senator to encourage and make space for people of color as leaders in our communities, including in government positions? Um, I have to answer that question and go back to my public service experience as an assistant public defender in two states. All my clients were uh, people of color and of course they were poor. Um, of course, I think that uh, we need to outreach uh, to people of color, but I don't think we need to, I think we, we should not overlook, I think which, which is the most important facet here, which is economics. I think poor people is, is, is more important than, than uh, their race. I think we need to look at encouraging people that are poor and underserved to, um, to get involved politically. Thanks for that question. Thank you all. Uh, for the next question, we're actually going to switch gears and talk about uh, housing and affordable housing. And let's do 90 seconds for this question. So kind of a two-part question. And we'll start with candidate Menza first. The question is, what is your plan to address the rising need for affordable housing beyond rent-based programs that can help people own homes and build equity. And related to that, what else might we do to prevent evictions due to lack of affordability? All right, the first part of your question was affordable housing. I take kind of a pragmatic approach to this. I look at a lot of the issues we have countrywide with areas that are expensive. You know, I just moved from Seattle. It was too expensive for me. Um, and I look at why it was affordable. It was not affordable. And it, every time you, you go back and look at what the issue was, um, you, you just go back to the tax base. You know, the, the landlords being taxed, the businesses being taxed, the property owners being taxed. Whenever you continue to tax and tax, you tend to pass that tax down to the, uh, to the renter or to the buyer. So, if we want to look, the first thing we can do in Colorado in terms of affordable housing is we need to make sure that we don't open up the Pandora's box, for example, getting rid of Gallagher, which would increase property taxes and other things that make affordable housing uh, even more challenging for folks. So, you know, and, and when it comes to making sure we have folks that can have sustainable rent uh, and, and mortgage payments, we need to make sure we have a vibrant economy that can support our, our citizens and our, our neighbors to make sure they can work and have the ability to, to, to be able to pay for their rent consistently. And so having a thriving economy, having a low tax base would do a lot to make sure that we, uh, we keep costs low in Colorado and uh, that'll help significantly. It's just looking around the country at the trends and that's my pragmatic approach is the trends in the country are that it's uh, taxes are the, the big issue to make things more expensive. So we need to keep it low and be conservative. Thank you. And candidate O'Connor, uh, you're next. And again, 90 seconds for this question. Okay, thanks for the question. Um, let me go to the evictions first. Uh, the way to address evictions is easy. It's, it's, it's to fund attorneys to represent people facing evictions. 99% of people that are facing evictions don't have an attorney and 99% of the people lose. So that's how you do that one. Um, I worked in foreclosure defense law uh, for a law firm down in Denver. And every day, all I did all day long was sue banks and try to keep people in their houses. I think that this um, is related to the affordable housing issue. I think that that Boulder County, Senate District 17, and, and all of the front ranges is, is absolutely unaffordable for the middle class and the poor. Um, the problem isn't taxes. The problem is... Um, is, is capitalism and, and, and the way that special interests and banks are able to run over the people. Dennis Gallagher is a personal friend of mine. He's part of the Irish community. And the Gallagher Amendment is probably the best thing that's ever happened to Colorado. So thanks for that question. 
Thank you. And candidate Hakez Lewis, you next. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I was very pleased uh, that the governor, I'll start with evictions. I was very pleased that as a response to COVID, uh, Governor Polis put a freeze on evictions. Uh, that has now expired. And I'm very glad that the CDC stepped in and has issued a federal stop. Uh, there are people still falling through the cracks on that. Um, we're going to have to take action on it. And that's why November 3rd is a very, very important date. Um, we did pass several bills in the 2019 session to address afford affordable housing. Right now in Boulder County, we have an affordable housing partnership of the various municipalities and the county commissioners. Unfortunately, we're not meeting the goal. Our goal for 2035 was to get 12% uh, of housing to be affordable housing. And unless we change paths, we're not going to get there. Part of the problem is we need to raise wages. It takes more than $30 an hour to live in Boulder County. We're not even close to that. I'm a member uh, of the Fight for 15, at least raising the minimum age to uh, at least $15 an hour. I think that will help. We need to have people working near where they live. That will help. And we also need to get rid of uh, the Gallagher Amendment. So I say vote yes on Amendment B to get to repeal Gallagher. Thank you. Thank you. For this next question, we'll start with candidate O'Connor. And the question is, we'll do one minute for this question. In the past General Assembly session, there were five anti-LGBTQ bills introduced. Oh, if elected senator, would you introduce legislation that would take away rights from the LGBTQ community or what would you do to support LGBTQ Coloradans? Um, yeah, thanks for that question. Um, this is a personal, um, this kind of hits home for me. Um, I would not uh, support uh, a bill to, um, to assist LGBTQ, absolutely not. I think one of the worst problems we have right now in Boulder and in Senate District 17 is that the, um, the public schools have adopted and put in transgender and radical LGBTQ curriculum into, they've incorporated that into the sex education curriculum and it's confused children like my daughter and other children and I think it's harmful. Um, I think that parents need to be immediately notified. I would in fact put forth a bill to have um, parents immediately notified as soon as their children um, um, decide that they may be transgender because um, we were not told as parents that our, our daughter was uh, considering transgendering and uh, they went behind our back and I think it was awful. Thanks. Candidate Hakez Lewis, you're next. Thank you for the question. Um, as the first LGBTQ state uh, representative from Boulder County. Obviously, this is a very personal uh, issue for me. Uh, I led some of the very first LGBTQ marches in the South, uh, where there were more uh, protesters than there were us, and they were uh, holding firearms. Uh, I have seen people uh, have their lives destroyed in, uh, when they came out to their parents. Uh, and we've, we've got to do something to stop this discrimination that's going on. Even this week, you had the two Supreme Court judges, Alito and Thomas, say that they were considering going back on same-sex marriage. Uh, that, that particular slate of hate legislation, those five bills, it, it was just dreadful. And I really hope that whoever is elected would never consider running anything like that again. So um, I, I will continue the, to fight for LGBTQ equality. Thank you for the question. Thank you. And candidate Menza, same question and you're next. Yeah, I, you know, we, we have gay and lesbian friends and we're very tolerant people. We're very socially, very balanced. And 
we live in a country of equality. We have a constitution, a bill of rights that protects everybody. Everybody should be treated equally and fair, no matter what your sexual orientation is. Orientation should not be an issue in today's society. You know, and so there's a differentiation between treating people with respect and, and tolerance and uh, bills and legislation that uh, interfere or hamper certain uh, other people's rights or, or get involved with areas of uh, teaching or politics that shouldn't be uh, crossed, for example. You know, Andrew O'Connor talked about uh, some of that um, creep, if you will, in terms of um, you know, your identity versus what the government should be doing or not doing in public schools. And I think that's something very important for all of us to understand is that tolerance and equality are absolutely important, but we need to remember where the swim lanes need to start and end in terms of how the government uh, reacts to that. Okay, thank you all. Uh, the next question will start with candidate Hakez Lewis, and we're switching to healthcare, the issue of healthcare. The question is, data shows that young adults in Colorado are more likely to be uninsured and avoid health care as a result. What would you do to ensure that Coloradans of younger Coloradans and of all ages access health care and can afford services when they do? And let's do uh, one minute for this question. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, as a he licensed healthcare professional uh, and the former pharmacy director for Medicaid, uh, we actually helped some of those young people trying to get healthcare in our Senate district. We have one of the finest uh, public health clinics in the state, uh, Clinica, and they do uh, try to help as many folks as they can. Um, I just want to emphasize that how important some of the ball ballot initiatives are. If we vote to cut taxes, we are taking money away from healthcare. Because of the downturn with COVID, we do not have the same amount of resources coming in to the state. So if you care about healthcare, and especially healthcare for young people, please vote no on 116 and 117, because those monies will be taken first thing from healthcare and from education. Thank you for the question. Thank you, and candidate Menza, your next same question. Well, I think uh, Sonia and I have the same passion for healthcare. I mean, I, mental health is a huge thing in healthcare. We need to have access to healthcare. We need to make sure our young folks are getting it. ACA helped provide a lot of that bridge when it came to Colorado. And I think that's extremely important. She and I just have a different way of looking at it. So when you cut taxes, when you keep Colorado a, a robust place where people want to do business, you create revenue, you create jobs, you create business, you create energy. And that energy, meaning money, financial, goes in to be able to, goes into our system to be able to, to, to bridge those budget short gaps. And you're right, we are suffering from a budget issue right now. And she's 100% right. We need to figure out a way to prioritize the funding and the money in order to make sure we have that health care access to all the people in the state. The way, you don't, what, the way you do that, though, is not by pushing businesses out of, out of Colorado and by getting people uh, a reason to leave and do business somewhere else. So we need to keep the money and the revenue here and make businesses grow here so we have a better tax revenue base. And that's the difference between us. Thank you. And candidate O'Connor. Um, I think that there are three answers to this question, and they are universal health care, universal health care, and universal health care. Um, there is no other option. There is no way that your health care should be connected to your job. Absolutely reprehensible. The ACA cannot be repealed. Um, mental health, dental health, physical health, they all need to be um, a right and uh, thanks for that question. Thank you all very much. I think we have, um, let's get one more short question in before we go to closing statements. Uh, the last question, we will start with candidate Menza and it is this, what state or national policy position supported by your political party are you most aligned with? Are there any positions that you disagree with? And let's do one minute for that question as well. All right, so we're talking national. I'm sorry, can you kind of repeat the- Sure. What state or national policy position supported by your political party 
are you most aligned with? Are there any positions that you disagree with? You know, I'm running as the unconventional Republican because I, I don't march to party politics. I've marched to what's important for our community here. So I would say that there's some things that, that we do here in Colorado from a bipartisan perspective, like the uh, Great Outdoors Act that uh, Cory Gardner and, and the rest of the folks put together is amazing. It's great for the country and the environment. And then there's other things that I've, I've publicly disagreed with with my party before. So, for example, if we're going to pick apart ACA, like Andrew mentioned, we need to make sure we have a way to make sure people have access to health care. Uh, like Sonia was talking about, a lot of those younger folks, we need to make sure that they're taken care of no matter what we do. And there's a lot of different ways to go about solving that. But as an unconventional Republican, I'm a very moderate, balanced person that believes that uh, there's there's... You know, I pull from both sides, uh, the goods from both sides and, and make the best out of it. And I think we have a lot of uh, goods here in Colorado and we just need to continue to capitalize on that with good leadership. Thank you. And candidate O'Connor. Okay, uh, thank you for that question. Um, just wanna say that I really can't stand the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, which is why I'm running unaffiliated. Um, but I think if my biggest beef is probably with the uh, Boulder County Democratic Party because it's kind of been too long a one party county. Um, I think we need new thinking and that's why I'm running as unaffiliated. Um, I'm not beholding to Democrat or Republican. And um, I think that puts me in a great position to serve the people of District 17. Thanks. Thank you. And candidate Heck is Lewis. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, I am very proud of my party's stance on so many issues, uh, health care for all, universal health care, uh, and also moving uh, us to more accessible health care. I'd like to see us do more on reducing the cost of prescription drugs. Um, I guess the issue that maybe i a little frustrated on is I think we should be moving to sustainable energy sources faster. We did pass uh, a bill and it's a climate change bill in 2019, uh, 1261 that will set carbon emission goals. Um, but they, they, the goal, the highest level uh, was set for 2050. Um, I wish we could move a little faster than that. We need greener energy. We need to, to get control or at least do something to stop climate change. So that's the issue that I'd like to see us move faster on. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your answers to those questions. And now we will go into closing statements. And again, candidates have each one minute uh, for a closing statement. We will go in reverse ballot order, meaning we'll start with candidate Menza, then candidate Hakez Lewis, and then candidate O'Connor. Uh, go ahead whenever you're ready, candidate Menza. Well, thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you. It was nice to meet you, Sonia and, and uh, Andrew. You guys are awesome. It was great talking to you both tonight, and, uh, and I love what you're saying. Um, the bottom line is, you know, for me, it's not about uh, identity politics or party narratives. It's about our community. It's about the issues of Colorado. And, you know, I spent 20 years in the Navy understanding what service is about, and how to serve and lead, but in very difficult situations. So working at the Capitol with uh, folks from across the party is not something that's uh, difficult for me. I like working with people. We need to focus on, like Andrew was saying, I, I do I do agree with a lot of what Andrew said. Is there's a lot of issues that we have, and uh, we need to get get rid of the divide, division and think about the community being unified, and we need to work across party lines, and I definitely have the uh, the ability to, to get that done in a, uh, a, a very bipartisan manner that's going to help all of us here in Colorado. So I appreciate the support and uh, I look forward to you all voting for me in November. So thank you very much. It was nice meeting everybody tonight. And candidate Hakez Lewis, you're next, please. I just want to thank the league for hosting this and thank Matt and Andrew for participating. And for those of you watching, I'd like to ask you to consider one simple question. How can we better take care of each other during this time of need? We can do it with compassion. We can do it by fighting for the greater good. And we can do it with love. 
if you have privilege, then you have to work for those who are less fortunate and more vulnerable. And I believe that's what makes Colorado the amazing state that we live in. It's our diversity. I've learned from my mom who went to law school at age 51 while trying to raise five kids. And I've learned from my wife, who's a hospice nurse, a frontline essential worker, that we're stronger together. And that's what I stand for. I, I think we need a senator who believes in science and education, working families and small businesses. And it's that compassion and someone who wants to give back to the community because that's been my life. There's, oh, I need to stop there, but I hope I'll earn your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And Candidate O'Connor, your closing statement, please. Um, thank you to the League of Women Voters. Um, Sonia, I know you, hello. Uh, good to see you again. Um, Matt, it was great meeting you. You're a good guy. Um, so I'm running as an unaffiliated candidate uh, right in, and I believe that the people of Senate District 17 come first, which I think is a direct contrast to the Boulder County Democratic Party. Like I said earlier, this has been a one party county for too darn long. Um, I'm a lawyer and this is a lawmaking job. And I believe that I'm the best candidate for this job and I can do the best job. Um, however, I understand if people don't want to write me in and if they don't, I'd ask them to, to vote for Matt Menza. Thanks. Thank you very much to all of you on behalf of the League of Women Voters, not only for your participation in tonight's forum, but also your participation in the democratic process. We know that running for office and serving as an elected official is hard work and we really appreciate your efforts. Thank you also to our lead candidate forum volunteers, Josephine Porter, Peggy Leach, our operations director, Mandy Nuku, and Sergio Angeles with Longmont Public Media. Gracias to our interpreter, Kelly Music. And finally, thank you to the District 17 voters participating tonight as viewers. It's up to all of us to make sure we respect and work to protect our democratic process. Too many people have suffered and succeeded in the struggle to win these rights for us not to use them. It starts with being an informed and active voter. To check out other important issues affecting our community, check out our League Voter Information website, vote411.org, for all your election information. This forum will be rebroadcast on Longmont Public Media's Channel 8 and will also appear on the League's YouTube channel. Look for links to the, on the League's website at lwvbc.org or our Facebook page. The League of Women Voters of Boulder County works throughout the year to help empower voters and defend democracy. If you want to lend your time and skills to encourage civic engagement for all people, in a nonpartisan manner, please join us. All the information you need is again at lwvbc.org. Thank you very much and have a great evening. <laughs>